Welcome back. Today's topic is topological sort, also called top sort for short. We're going to discuss what is top sort, where it's used, and how to find a topological ordering with some animation. The motivation for top sort is that many real world situations can be modeled as a graph of nodes and directed edges where some events have to occur before others. Some simple examples include school, class prerequisites, program dependencies, event scheduling, assembly instruction ordering, and much, much more. Let's begin with an example. Suppose you're a university student and you really want to take class H. Well, before you can enroll in class H, you must first take classes D and E. But before taking class D, you must also take classes A and B, which have no prerequisites. So in some sense, there appears to be an ordering on the nodes of the graph. If we needed to take all the classes, the top sort algorithm would be capable of telling us the order in which we should enroll in classes such that we never enroll in a course which we do not have prerequisites for. Another canonical example of an application of top sort is for program build dependencies. A program cannot be built unless all its dependencies are first built. For example, consider this graph where each node represents a program and the edges represent that one program depends on another to run. Well, if we're trying to build program J on the right hand side, then we must first build program H and G, but to build those, we also need E and F, but to build those, we also need, and so on. The idea is to first build the programs without dependencies and then move onwards from there. How do we find a valid ordering in which to build all the programs? Well, this is where top sort comes into play. One possible ordering might be to start by building A, then building C, B, D, F, E, G, H, and then J. Notice that there are unused dependencies in this case, and that will happen from time to time, which is fine. So in conclusion, top sort is an algorithm which will give us a topological ordering on a directed graph. A topological ordering is an ordering of nodes for which each edge from node A to node B, node A appears before node B in the ordering. If it helps, this is just a fancy way of saying that we can align all the nodes in a line and have all the edges pointing to the right. An important note to make is that topological orderings are not unique. As you can imagine, there are multiple valid ways to enroll in courses such that you can still graduate or to compile a program and its dependencies in a different order than you previously did. Sadly, not every type of graph has a topological ordering. For example, any graph with a directed cycle cannot have a valid ordering. Well, think of why this might be true. There cannot be an order if there is a cyclic dependency, since there is nowhere to start. Every node in a cycle depends on another. So any graph with a directed cycle is therefore forbidden. The only graphs that have valid topological orderings are called directed acyclic graphs. That is, graphs with directed edges and no cycles. So a natural question to ask is, how do I verify that my graph does not contain a directed cycle? One method is to use Tarjan's strongly connected component algorithm, which can detect these cycles. Another neat thing definitely worth mentioning is that every tree has a topological ordering, since by definition, trees do not have any cycles. An easy way to find a topological ordering 
with trees is to iteratively pick off the leaf notes. It is like you're cherry picking from the bottom. It doesn't matter the order you do it. Once the root of a subtree has all grayed out children, then it becomes available. This procedure continues until there are no more nodes left. So we know how it works for trees, but how about general directed acyclic graphs? Well, the algorithm is also simple. Just repeat the following steps. First, find an unvisited node, it doesn't matter which. From this node, do a depth first search exploring only reachable unvisited nodes. On the recursive callback, add the current node to the topological ordering in reverse order. And that's it. Let's do an example and things will become much clearer. Here's a directed acyclic graph that we want to find one of many topological orderings for. As the algorithm executes, I'll be keeping track of the call stack on the left hand side. And in case you're curious, I will also be posting the current topological ordering at the bottom of the screen. The first step is going to be to pick an unvisited node. I'm going to pick node H arbitrarily. Now we do a depth first search outwards from H in all possible directions, exploring where we can. Let's go to node J. Now that I'm at node J, I'm going to keep exploring. And so let's go to M. Now that we're at M, there's nowhere left to go, so we backtrack and add M as the last element to the topological ordering. Still at J, we still need to explore L. Now we're at L. Now backtrack because there's nowhere left to go. Also backtrack at J and add it to the ordering. Notice that the stack frames are getting popped off the call stack as I recurse. Now we're at H and we still need to visit node I. So now we're at node I and from node I we try and visit node L, but then we figure out that node L is already visited so we don't go there. Backtrack, backtrack again and add I to the ordering and mark it as explored. And finally we're back at H. As you saw, selecting a random unvisited node made us visit a subsection of the graph. We continue this process until all nodes are visited. The next node I'm going to randomly pick is going to be node E. In the interest of time and simplicity, I will let the animation run and you can follow along. Note that if you try and predict the next few values in topological ordering, you may not get the same values as me because topological orderings are not unique. However, this does not mean you are incorrect. All right, I will let the animation play and try and follow along. So that's it for that subsection of the graph. The next node I'm going to pick is going to be node C to visit. So we start at node C and explore this subsection of the graph. Now that all nodes are visited, we have a valid topological ordering at the bottom of the screen. So now that we understand how the algorithm works, what does the code actually look like? Here's some pseudocode for top sort. Let's walk through it real quick. The first thing I do is I get the number of nodes from the graph, which I assume is passed in as an adjacency list from the function. Then I declare an array called v, short for visited, which tracks whether a node has been visited or not. The next array called orderings is the result that we'll be returning from this function. This is equivalent to the 
ordering at the bottom of the screen in the last slides. Associated with the orderings array is the index i, which tracks the insertion position of the next element in the topological ordering. As you have been seeing in the slides, we insert elements backwards, which is why i starts at n minus 1. Next, we're ready to enter a for loop to iterate over all the nodes in our graph. The loop variable called at tracks the ID of the node we're currently processing. I then check if we're on a visited node because those are the only ones we care about. Then I start a depth first search. Notice that before I do, I initialize an array called visited nodes, which I pass into the depth first search method to add the nodes as we find them. Then after that's done, after the depth first search is finished, I look at the nodes we found in our visited nodes array and then add them to the ordering. Now the last bit we need to look at is the depth first search method itself. The depth first search method is very simple. All I do is I mark the node we're currently at to be visited. Then for each edge going outwards from the node we're at, I make sure the destination node is unvisited, then call the method again, but this time on the destination node. On the callback, when the method returns, this is when we're stuck and need to backtrack. So this is where I add the current node to the visited nodes array which is essentially the output for this method. Back to the top sort method. Now that we understand how the top sort algorithm works, there's a neat optimization we can do to improve the performance in terms of both time and space. Notice that every time we enter the inner if statement block, we need to allocate memory for an array. That array gets filled with node IDs and then we iterate over them to place them inside the orderings array. But how about we just directly insert found nodes inside the orderings array instead of allocating memory and doing this additional work? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. Here I got rid of the unnecessary array and modified the depth first search method to return the next valid insertion position in the orderings array. Now we need to pass in the index i and the orderings array so that it can be filled directly inside the depth first search method. Inside the new depth first search method, one thing that changed is that now we have a return value and we're passing in some additional variables. Notice that instead of adding the current node to the visited nodes array as we were doing before, now we simply insert that node directly inside the orderings array. The last thing to do is to return i minus 1 because the index of the current insertion position is no longer index i but index i minus 1. So that's it for the topological sort. As always, there's some source code for the topological sort algorithm which can be found at my GitHub account at github.com slash slash algorithms. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, just leave a comment. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more computer science and mathematics videos. Guys, thank you very much and see you next time.